Welcome to Module 41 in this series of lectures on statistical process improvement and statistical quality assurance. We've come to the last major part of the course, last set of uh, lectures. These have to do with process improvement through the design and analysis of experiments. In the Table 1.1 of Vardaman and Job that forms the intellectual uh, backbone of this set of lectures. Uh, we've made our way from uh, steps 1, 2, and 3 uh, to assessing and working towards process stability, uh, talking about control charts. We've discussed characterization of process and product performance. Uh, through such things as capability measures and um, probabilistic tolerancing and, and propagation of error. And we've come now to the last section of this uh, table, uh, working toward uh, process improvement. And uh, that's material that's discussed in chapter 6 and 7 of the Vardaman and Job text, and that's the uh, subject of these uh, last 15 modules in this in this series. We're going to uh, think of this little picture as our uh, basic cartoon of what the object is in this set of lectures. Uh, one is going to th we're going to think about a physical process that has some kind of an output that we're going to call y, uh, a variable that we wish to uh, direct. Uh, we can imagine that this process has many noisy inputs. And on this process, there are a number of knobs, a number of variables that could be changed uh, at the uh, will of a, of a person uh, running the process uh, could be held constant uh, by a person running the process or might be subject to uh, sort of random changes introduced by a, uh, a person outside of the, outside of the process. Uh, but the, the basic idea is for those knobs on the process for which one uh, gets to choose settings. The question is how to figure out which settings of those give uh, desirable outcomes responses. Why? Uh, we're going to begin with a most basic process scenario uh, where one has data uh, from some number R uh, of different process conditions. Uh, so for the time being, uh, we're not going to pay so much attention as to exactly where these physical variables x1, x2, x3, and so on might be uh, set beyond recording them. We're not going to talk about the structure of the settings. We're just going to say that somehow we get our different process conditions. And we're going to suppose that the jth response in the ith sample, double subscript things here, uh, is going to be called yij. And we're going to suppose that we've got sample sizes n1, n2, n3, up to r. Uh, here is a classic uh, data set that we're going to use in this and the next few uh, modules. It's a uh, data set taken from DeVore's Probability and Statistics for Engineering and the Sciences. Uh, it concerns the current required uh, to achieve a target brightness on a, on a type of old-style old television tube, CRT tube, uh, where there were two types of glass and three types of phosphor involved creating six different types of tubes. Uh, for the time being, we're going to ignore the two by three structure 
uh, the two types of glass, three three types of phosphor structure uh, in the in the six six types of tubes, and just uh, think about analyses that admit there are six different ways of making uh, television tubes. Tests on three tubes of each type uh, produce current requirements uh, in the following table. So here is tube type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5, type 6. Uh, sure enough, uh, type 1, 2, and 3 have glass number 1, while type 4, 5, and 6 have glass number 2. Uh, Types 1 and type 4 have phosphor 1 and phosphor 1 both places. Types 2 and 5 have phosphor 2. Types 3 have and 3 and 6 have phosphor 3. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to not pay so much attention to that 2 by 3 structure. Uh, there are uh, three observations here, three observations here, three observations here. In each of these tube types, there are uh, three tubes were made and current requirements were measured. Uh, one might take each of those six samples and compute average and variance, average and variance, average and variance for types one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, so uh, that's the kind of data that we're going to talk about. Uh, in order to do statistical analysis, we need some kind of uh, probability model for describing uh, the data generating mechanism. And a place to start, a, a common kind of model, is the so-called one-way normal model that says that uh, observations from any particular uh, sample, from any, sorry, from any particular set of conditions are normally distributed about a mean uh, that's peculiar to that set of conditions, but with a standard deviation that is common across groups. So uh, what we'd be saying is perhaps something like this, that condition 1 uh, has responses with mean mu1 uh, and some standard deviation. Uh, condition number 2 might have a different mean, uh, but the same standard deviation as uh, condition number 1. Uh, so on with 3, 4, up to distribution R. This is the one-way normal model in words and the one-way normal model uh, in, in pictures. Uh, if one wanted to try to uh, talk about them in symbols or talk about the model in symbols, one would say that an observation <coughs> from group I that is condition I, is a mean that is peculiar to uh, condition I plus noise, where these noise uh, variables are independent, normal, mean zero, and standard deviation uh, sigma. So this is the one-way <coughs> normal model in symbols. Uh, observation is mean plus uh, normal random variation uh, that, uh, is, that has the same standard deviation uh, across all the, uh, all the different R different groups or uh, experimental conditions. Uh, one uh, ought to do some kind of model checking, uh, some kind of examination of residuals to convince oneself this is a plausible model, uh, but for what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to act as if that has been taken care of uh, in, in advance uh, before 
the calculations in this in the next module and the ensuing modules are uh, made.